All right, welcome back. This is Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. And today we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, some perspective boxes and uh, what we're going to do with the perspective boxes and some thinking that helps us to visualize the third dimension much more easily. And we can be using all kinds of things where we're dealing with anywhere from beginning, intermediate to advanced perspective. This, uh, this is one of the most important steps one of the most important concepts. So let's say we went ahead and we had a, uh, a box. Now I'll, I think I'll just do one without um, worrying about a horizon line. So let's, let's do a, a perspective box over here. And so we're going to go ahead and do a one point perspective box. If you don't know what a one point perspective box is versus a two point perspective box, uh, go ahead and there's some videos that I have on that. Go ahead and, and watch those and and uh, get that into the gray matter. Get, get your brain wrapped around it so that we can so that you can uh, understand it. And that's you know all that's all art is. It's all understanding. It's it's being acquainted with ideas. You know these ideas isn't be about perspective. It's not because I'm some sort of great uh, thinker or something. This was done by mathematicians who are and and uh, scientists and uh, and folks like that that are of course you know far beyond my capabilities came up with this and all I'm doing is passing this on to you. I'm giving you the the uh, the information and I'm passing it on. It was information that I was given when I was a student and it will help your you're drawing immensely by understanding it. So this is again a book, uh, a, pardon me, a box, not a book, but a box in two point perspective. And there we go. Let's we'll darken these up. Um, And maybe, just maybe, we'll go ahead and do our... So whenever we draw a box, we're, we're using three sets of lines. Height, width, and depth. So that's all we're using whenever we're working in perspective is height, width, and depth lines. And so, and maybe we'll make all our... So if this is our, these are of course our height, this would be our width, and this would be our depth. Um, So we would say height, width, and length. Uh, same thing. This right here that I'm drawing is my length. And this right here would be the width. I'm going to use purple for my length lines. Just to make things a little more clear, hopefully. As, as we're uh, you know dealing with this perspective stuff. And that was far, far longer than needed to be. But uh, for our width lines, I think we'll use red. So that's there. Glue in his pencil is making it so that the lead is pushing through the back. Which is why I'm holding it so strangely. <laughs> For those of you in my class, you're like, man, he never lets us hold pencils like that. Um, so again, this is our height, our width, and our depth. Uh, the back corner these two stops right there and so these right here are our four corners 
And right now, again, in our sets, in our three sets, we have three lines. Three height lines, three width lines, and three depth lines, or three length lines, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to come on over here, and we're going to, hopefully we can, if you, you know, if we have a perspective box, this is parallel to this, that's parallel to that, and the fourth one would be like, we're coming around the corner like a ribbon, and this would be the fourth um, length line or depth line, whichever, again, whichever one you prefer to use the term for. So that will be there. Then we're going to bring a length line down here. Okay. And then we're going to bring another line. Um, this would be our one, two, no, parallel, 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 and around the corner with this one. So, again, we've got lift this a little bit. So this is our, um, and again, this is the four corners down here of our box. And again, our box, I'll just darken this one a little bit, so. So here's a two-point perspective box. Now the concept that we want to understand is being able to wrap this box on any side. And we're going to do that with the concept of X marks the spot, or for those that have been in my class or have watched some of the different videos, we're going to use an armature of a rectangle. And an interesting thing about perspective, anything that works in flat space or two-dimensional space also works in three-dimensional space. So any tricks that you know that work two-dimensionally will also work three-dimensionally as long as you do it correctly. So we should, we know and these planes are going to be my, um, I'm going to, I'm going to use this front plane, top plane, and I guess this is the front right, this is the back right, this is the corresponding bottom. Um, all four of these planes, like so, that's the front, this turns 90 degrees, like so, and comes along the, uh, you know, faces the front right. This then turns 90 degrees and goes down, and that's the corresponding back plane or back right plane. Okay, and then this would be the bottom plane. Um, we're going to go ahead and find the middle of each one of those planes. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here, and maybe I'll use a different, I'll use a red, but this one doesn't have the, the, the lead pushing out the back, so we'll use this one. Um, so X marks the spot. So we go corner to corner and corner to corner, and what we've done is we've found the middle. Now this is what we call perspective middle, okay? And the reason it's called perspective middle is because if I measure this with my pencil and my thumb, and I measure from that middle, that midpoint to the front edge, and then I measure with my thumb and the end of this pencil over to this edge. They're not quite the same. This is actually a soft perspective box. And so it's, it's uh, you know, it's close. It's still not exact. So if we took this and we bring our thumb and we touch there, we find that this is from here to here is, or again, from here to here, from that midpoint, there's more space than from here to the back. And that's because of foreshortening. So they're not, e they're not measured equals, they are equal perspe in perspective. And we're gonna find that that happens all over the place. We're gonna come over here and find the middle of this plane. Again, we're gonna go corner to corner, like so. And corner to corner, like so. And by the way, we do this for those that have watched How to Draw a Simple House or have done any sort of, um, you know, perspective drawing 
uh, you know, whether it be a cityscape or whether it be a motorcycle or whether it be a car or what have you, the ability to find the middle on each plane is the key. And in the, when we did the house, we were doing uh, Xing and doubling, which is basically, there's our X marks the spot. That's what we we're using, is the X to find the middle point in the rectangle. And then using that to double stuff over. And for any of those that are, are very familiar with, um, well, with perspective, we use it all the time. Uh, and there's certain artists out there that do a lot of conceptual art, uh, a lot of uh, concept drawing and things like that um, with perspective vehicles. And, you know, they just, you know, you'll go and watch their sites and, yeah, they'll have, they'll be doing the, the Xing and doubling and, and doing it for all kinds of reasons. It is one of the most powerful tools you have in your perspective arsenal. So I'm, I'm marking the middle. This is the middle of the top plane, perspective middle. This is the perspective middle of the back plane. This is the perspective middle of the bottom plane. Okay. Now what we can do with this, and this is the cool part, is I can take a line all the way around this. Now I want to make sure that this is um, parallel to this guy. So maybe I'll, I'll use this just to, to take a little bit less time, but that's not bad. So we'll go ahead and I have a line. We're going to act like this is a ribbon. And this ribbon goes up and it connects, it connects this both here and there, touching that top and bottom of that plane. And then we're going to bring it, um, I'm going to actually bring it up the back too, because that will give me also two points touching the bottom and top plane. Okay, so this is touching the top, this is touching the bottom, that's touching the top, this is touching the bottom. And now I can actually take, because this is, this is, this it should give me, that will, should give me the exact angle. Unless something was not, you know, quite straight or I did something weird. But if I did this right, these two lines should pass right through that midpoint. There we go. Okay. So we can think of this as a ribbon. This ribbon comes up, it goes over, it drops down, and now the ribbon's going to come underneath. So we can wrap this like we would a ribbon, and this is wrapping and giving us the volume, right? It's almost like we can see if we take our, our uh, and use our imagination, this right here is a slice going all the way through, like I've taken, like if this was a square cake and I took a, a knife and cut it right in half, this would be where that cut would be. It was right through this little rectangular plane. Okay. Or for some reason I had some, there was an old trick. They probably don't even do these anymore. It's been so long since I've seen a magic show, but, um, they used to have this thing where they put a gal in a, in a box and they'd act like they had these straight blades and the blades would divide her up to make the illusion that you'd cut her in half. Sounds pretty brutal to talk about like that, but anyway, so it was, it was a pretty famous, you know, thing. And I, like I said, nowadays there are much more sophisticated stuff they're doing, so I'm sure you don't see. And maybe you do. I don't know. I just haven't watched a magic act and act in well longer than I'm going to talk about. But they'd have this thin blade that they would shove through the little cabinet, and again, this would represent that that blade going through the middle of this box. Or, you know, it'd be the, it'd be the plane that where I'd want to cut through because I would cut it straight in half, you know, this way. Okay. So I can wrap, I can wrap this all the way around, right? Well now, and I've, I've, I've wrapped this around, you know, the, you know, these four planes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing on these, you know, sides. I'm going to wrap it going around this way. So I'm going to use my purple uh, pencil. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and X marks this spot. Same old, same old. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go through here. Now the top and bottom points are already there, so I don't need to do that. I just need to do 
the front left side right there and then we're going to do the back left side because again we already have the front and bottom points midpoints okay so we go ahead and go from there to there and from here to here right that's the middle there this is the middle here and once again I could go ahead and bring this up through the middle and this side's going away from me much more quickly it has more of an angle than this side and so that perspective middle is much more pronounced if I measure this to the middle and then come over here from the middle you know this is you know it's it's more than it's almost a quarter of an inch difference and it's just because this is going away from me and therefore it's going to have more diminishment there's going to be more foreshortening whereas this one to this one was very little maybe a sixteenth of an inch because this one's almost turned com completely towards me like you know almost a true rectangle it's not but almost um, so again I'm going to go ahead and go through the middle of this far edge this now touches there that now touches there and we're going to act like we've got a ribbon going both directions a ribbon wrapping this plane all these planes and then a ribbon wrapping through these planes so let's go ahead and mark this all right so we'll connect that through you know the sides through the bottom and then we'll connect the sides There we go. Sides through the top. Okay. Now you have two intersecting planes, or if you don't want to think of this as being invisible, well then we've taken a ribbon and we've wrapped that ribbon all the way around the planes this way and all the way around the planes this way. Now if we wanted to, we could say, all right, well, where are these two planes? This is also if I cut the cake this way, this would be that plane I'd want to visualize. And if I like, I could go ahead, see if we can make this seem like it's, um, uh, if I run over all the orange, it may be a little less, a little more, conf a little more confusing. So I'm going to try to see if I can divide this in a way so we can see this plane a little more easily. But these are now meeting at right angles, like so. And this is meeting this one at a right angle, like so. Okay. So I saw an old illustrator this once, back before everything went digital, and I immediately understood how this guy who did all these wonderful architectural renderings was able to keep, you know, these really straight lines, you know, when he was creating value and stuff. He'd come over here with this and use this as a as a as a guide. I just had these these drawings that were just fantabulous, just amazing. And he was known for his uh, perspective illustrations. So again, we have these. I just was trying to show these two that they intersect right in the middle, and this would be the middle. of this now I'm trying to cover the orange so it, again it's not near as confusing but obviously if these were transparent 
And and I don't know if it's if you can see it on the camera. I can actually see it here because our eyes are a lot more sensitive to color than the camera is. But I can see the orange through there a little bit. Uh, and I was just trying to color the purple so that we can see that these two planes are definitely intersecting. And this is the plane right here that's going, you know, around this way, right? And then this over here is this plane going here, and they're meeting at 90 degrees, right? And so we want to be able to find the middle of our planes because that we know exactly where the line is that it's touching right along here, through the middle, right along there, through the middle, right along there, through the middle. If we don't have that, we don't know where it is. Like if I put, I could still connect this line, but without some sort of reference, I don't know, is it a quarter of the way back? Is it, this is halfway back, exactly. But if we don't know, we don't know, hey, is that a third, is that a fifth, is that an eighth? Because in perspective, it's compressing, and so you can't just eyeball it, all right? Um, you could also do where if you're trying to cut this in, in quarters where you're cutting this way and cutting this way, well, this right here would be the footprint of this slice of, let's say it was a, a very, you know, a cake or something. Uh, this would be the footprint of that slice. You know, you'd be slicing it here, slicing it there, taking it, and there'd only be three of these left. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to show you that we can also go around this way. So right now we've got this plane coming around this direction. We also have this coming around this direction. But we can also bring one around the middle. So again, let's see. Try not to get lost in all the lines. Okay. Okay. So we go ahead and go through the middle of that right through there. And then that could come through the middle right Yeah. Go through the middle. Whoops, drop this down. right through there and this could go around the back right we could go ahead um, I don't think I will go around the back just to make sure it doesn't confuse us too much but we know where the midpoint is there till it hits the back corner there come around through the middle here till it hits the back corner there oh well, maybe we'll do it anyways I think we got so many, many different colors here maybe we're not gonna have to worry too much about uh, confusing but let's say we went ahead and said all right well, this now comes over here. And these are planes, right? These are, um, you know, flat planes. And it's really kind of cool because right now we've got, and if we wanted to, you know, show what, what's happening here, um, this would be coming, you know, let's see, that to there. We could go ahead and show where this is actually touching this plane, and then this is where this is touching that plane. You could actually make this look like a shelving unit or something. Yeah, right there. So, this would be where this plane is intersecting these two, right here. And again, we can make it go all the way past it, but I don't want to, let's not confuse things too much, but I want you to understand that what we could do is we actually make this like a shelving unit. Like maybe this is, the, again, where this is coming here. No, we wouldn't, we're, gonna, we're not going to make it look like it's transparent. I mean, if it was, you'd see a little bit of that green coming all the way across, but the way it is, we've got this 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 plane here, right, and this plane over here, right. 
And so we've got this plane here that intersects that plane at 90 degrees, and this intersects both the, you know, this plane and that plane at 90 degrees as it goes around. And for those that have done drawing before, what we're talking about is now we actually have the X, Y, and Z axis planes. Uh, or, if it's easier for us to think about without saying X, Y, Z axis, we have a ribbon that's going all the way around this way. We've got a ribbon going all the way around this way, following that purple line. And we've got one going all the way around this way, following that orange line. We've wrapped this box, you know, with these ribbons, like it's some sort of Christmas present. All right. So we're going to come back. I'm going to draw a one-point perspective box, and we're going to do the same thing, just to show you how it would be in a one-point perspective box. Back in a minute. All right, so here we're back. We've got this. Um, we have a one point perspective box, almost a cube, but not quite. Uh, we can go ahead again to find the middle. We can go ahead and, and go corner to corner with this. And I don't think I'll color it in with this. I think that maybe got a little bit too much. I also changed my. The, the purple pencil, I think, to blue, I think, is going to give us a little bit better ease to see these, you know, separate from these. Uh, so, again, we're going to go corner to corner, corner to corner. Now, in one point perspective, we actually start with a true rectangle. Or if it's a cube, well, then it would be a, a rectangle that's square. In other words, as tall as it is wide. So this would be true measured middle. And its corresponding back plane is also a true rectangle. So if we took this corner to corner, and maybe I'll just do a smaller X too so we just don't get confused with, the, with all this Xing. So maybe I'll just do the X towards the middle. Still connecting the corners, but then just leaving, this is the middle right there. This is the middle of that right there. So maybe we'll see if this will make it look so we don't have just these X's everywhere and confuse the muddy the water, so to speak. So maybe we'll come over here and just put enough of this diagonal in that we can mark the middle. So there's the middle where, where those two points cross. And then we'll mark the middle of the bottom plane, like so. Mark that right there. We're going to mark this corner, going back to that corner. And again, sometimes people are like, why, why, what, 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 why, why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, and again, the reason why is it gives us information that we use all the time especially in more advanced perspective scenarios. Now I think I'll also make a broken line going un on the back side and underneath side so that way our front line will stand out a little bit more and maybe again try to so hopefully it'll be less confusing in case in case it is. If it's not well then good. Good deal. But I think that last one just got a little bit much. And all we're doing is the same thing, except we're doing a one-point perspective. Well, that one should have been a broken line. <laughs> I just got through saying, well, I'm going to make this more clear. And lo and behold, what did I do? Made them the same. And this is... This is, uh, you know, colored pencil, so that's not going to erase very well. Let's see, what if we... I'm trying to distinguish this into a checkered line. I don't know if it's succeeding, but that's supposed to be a checkered line. It's a little darker, but not a, not enough. <laughs> that's all right. 
So we can't see this line. This is underneath, so we'll make this a broken line too. Uh, Uh, this one can be seen, so this will be a solid line. And again, this is supposed to be, again, a broken line um, that we tried to darken to make it seem a little bit more like it's broken through here. Um, I don't know if I could... No, I didn't do anything for us except put marks on it. Alright, but this is again this plane that's going you know like we brought a ribbon around here across the top drop down the back and coming underneath all the way around. We've completed this plane again it will, as if we've taken a knife and sliced this in half. And then we're going to do the same thing on these planes right here. So we're going to go corner to corner And again, I'm just going to go ahead and mark the middle of these guys, so we have fewer lines, a little less confusion. And again, I, the only reason I'm doing this a second time is because sometimes people get lost when they're dealing with one point versus two point if you're not used to doing it. So we're going to go ahead and go, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and take this from that corner to that corner. Take that like that. Go from here from this corner to that corner. Whoops, that corner to that corner. There we go. There we go. So there's the middle. And now we're going to wrap all the way around here. So we'll take this because we can see the left side, no, the right side, not the left side. We can't see the left side. We can see the right side. So we'll bring this straight up. Uh, this is going to be a hidden line. It's there, but we'll so we'll make it broken. Okay. We can't see underneath, so we'll make that one a broken line. So we'll break in this line here. And that will be broken. Like so. And then we'll be able to see the top line, so we'll go ahead and make this line solid and it goes passes through the middle like so all right and so again if we want to we could go ahead and color in this plane and again maybe we'll separate these so we can see it so we're not going to overlap them like they're transparencies because again that can sometimes be a little confusing with all the different colors. So again this is this blue plane coming through here slicing through this in half this away or that we've wrapped this with a ribbon going both directions front to back top and bottom and then with the other one going right to left bottom top So this is this plane going through there. Just realized I probably should have made some allowances for that. The third one we're going to do all the way around the front through the sides and the back. But that's alright. I think this will make, make it a little bit more interesting or at least maybe a little more clear. Uh, so again this is the, the slice going through this way or the ribbon wrapping front, back, and across the top and bottom. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, to make it look like they're transparent, so that's why we can only see a little bit of this guy because they meet at 90 degrees and we're trying to make these planes look more like they're a little opaque so that hopefully we can see this juncture a little easier that this is. 
again the juncture where these two are meeting and where they meet is right through there. That's where they touch is that dark line across there. Okay, so we've got it going through the, uh, we've got two of those planes. You know, again, we could say, well, this is the length and this is the depth. This is the height. Um, and now we'll do the one going through the midpoints like so. And we're going to use, I believe, the dark green pencil. So this will be right along the front face. And right on this front face, this is also touching that red plane too. That's, they're touching right there. That's, that's important to understand. And then let's see. Let's go ahead and come from here. Maybe we'll make this line broken. And again, a, a broken line is a, a drafting notation saying, hey, the line exists, it just can't be seen. Okay. Now there's times you would want to make it broken, there's other times where you wouldn't. If I'm doing some sort of line drawing and I, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm going to leave the, the back corner, but I don't want it to seem distracting, or if I'm marking it so that I can make a better line. Again, I may not I may not break the line up like this, but for what I'm doing right now, it's it's fine to break the line. Okay, so okay, and then again, this would touches the green plane right there, and if we want to make this like shelves, this would come over. And then where it hits that red line, it'd become a broken line because that means I can't see it, but it's still there and it would touch. So we have this coming back over and up. We still have our three, our three sets, height, width, and depth. Because again, we're trying to make this into like these were shelving units. Okay. And again, this would be touching meeting at a right angle as this is like a shelf coming off that the blue plane this would be like a shelf that I'm putting whatever knickknacks on or things in the uh, you know for your apartment or whatever it is you got holding your game consoles or a plant or something so Again, this is the, the green. Uh, this blue, I think we're going to try to put it, bring a little bit of this in here just to make it seem more blue, because right now it's turquoise. And the turquoise is a little too close to the, to the green, I think. So again, this is just a little bit of color stuff to try to scoot this over, this blue, into something closer to true blue. Because if you have blue-green and then you put blue-violet together, they start to look like uh, closer to what we understand blue to be. That's all we're doing. We're just taking and trying to make this a little more blue. So that again, this, this is standing out a little bit more. Maybe I'll show the ones that can be seen. Just put a little bit of violet over the top of it. And again, just by doing that, it looks like it's more blue. That's just color stuff. Um, but it's good to know if you're doing it works whether you're painting it works whether you're working in colored pencil or pastel or what have you it it works with all your different types of medium that anything that has color gouache casein um, if you're painting digitally it'll work that way too um, if you're using painter or photoshop or something like that um so anyways we've got again now we've got all three planes we've got XYZ axis or we've got you know the width plane we've got the we have the height you know 
um, you know, going through here. We have the width going through there, and then we have, anyways, we have the x, y, z axis. This is the, the, the volume this way, the volume that way, and the volume this way. Um, very, very cool. Or, you know, again, if we like to prefer to think about it in a different way, we can just say we've wrapped ribbons. We've wrapped ribbons around this going this way. We've wrapped a ribbon going around that way. We've wrapped a ribbon going around this way. So, kind of cool stuff. And again, we use these in all kinds of different ways when we're, we're dealing with perspective and things. So, what I want, uh, I would, I would, if you guys haven't done this before, I'd, I would, I'd, I'd play with this concept. We're going to use this concept in a whole lot of different ways uh, coming up. Um, this is the basis for any xing and doubling. It's the basis for you can do armature of a rectangle on here, which is really kind of cool. Uh, so this is in halves, and if I wanted to find thirds, and I know how to do, the, and I know how to create the armature, you could go ahead. This is just a a quick little tip on this, but anything with armature of a rectangle works. So if I go ahead and put my, I, I need my whole X for this though. If I go ahead and go, all right, well, here's my, here are my four points. And with those four points, um, these are the corners right here, these four points. But we've also, with these lines, we've marked the middle too. We've got, this is a middle of this line, this is the middle of that line, this is the middle of that line, this is the middle of that line. We've got, so we've got midpoints and we've got the main corners. For armature of the, re of the rectangle, if we wanted to mark the one third, we basically come from the corner to a midpoint, any midpoint to any corner, and where it crosses the main diagonal, so this is where this crosses that main diagonal, that's one third. If I came from this corner to that midpoint, we're using a different midpoint completely, but it's still from a midpoint to a corner, it's gonna cross the main diagonal. That right there is the back third. And you could go ahead and, if I needed to, I could divide this up equally in perspective into thirds. So this would go like this. That would be my third top and bottom. And we go through this like this. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, that sounds bad. Okay, good. It's afraid it was all... Yes. Okay, got it. And we've got this. Now this is divided into perfect thirds in perspective, or pretty dang close. And if we measured this, with my thumb and the end of that pencil, we would start to find that this one's a little thinner and that this one's thinner still. They're getting shorter as they go back because of foreshortening, but you've got... So we can divide this in all kinds of ways. Also remember that if I have that mark, not only does it divide it vertically, but it also divides it horizontally. And so you could say, well, let's see, this is, that's one third, that's one third, and you could even, you know, bring this together to where it's going to have that Yeah. So we could divide this up like tic-tac-toe. Dividing it up into thirds. That's a third there. That's a third there. Right about there. Yeah, right about there. Now we've divided this up into thirds using armature of a rectangle. Tic-tac-toe. We could say, all right, this is one, you know, that's one block there. You know, this is another block down here. One, two, you know, this one right here is the dividing point. 
So you've got three tiles this way, and you've got two tiles up here, and this time, you know, I could go ahead and just color these in just to show the grid. This is a tic-tac-toe pattern. Sometimes you'll see this in tile work on, on floors, and again, you can use this to create tiles. There's some better ways of doing it, but I could also make this into tiles, or I could actually use this if I wanted to make, turn this into a Rubik's Cube. Let's say I want to turn this into a Rubik's Cube. Well, I've already got all three. I've got three columns. Three columns. Uh, and, and then we've got, or pardon me, three columns and three rows. These are the columns and these are the rows. So we've got three columns and three rows. And then you would just, you know, bring these around the, the, the rest of the cube. We'd bring this across here, we'd bring that across there, bring these across the top, and again we could go ahead and turn this into a Rubik's Cube. Kind of cool stuff. And if there's anyone who's having a little bit of a hard time visualizing that, let's see if we could... I hate it when those squeak like that. Divide that that away. Um, we need to divide. So once we've got this, where these lines, I've brought these straight across because this is a true rectangle. This is how we do it in a one-point perspective. It's a little different in two-point, but basically, this still is hitting my original X, and it's hitting this point hits the X. That's a third. Where this point hits the X, this that's where this line. It's that X. Now, unfortunately, it almost coincides with this line here, which is a little confusing. In fact, it's so close, uh, I might just use that line because it might, it might be less confusing. But it's, it's like to the right of there by like a 64th of an inch. I mean, it's so small that for all intents and purposes. Um, but we can make that, you know, let's just say this right here going up the face of this. That's a third. This coming over here. That's a third. And once again, we've got our little blocks. This is be, let's continue this little tile pattern. Okay. That would go here. And this would go here. All right. So, and again, we'd have this one is in the middle, so we'll go ahead and, and color that one in. We're just trying to create the, the, the same pattern. All right. This would then be here. Some of the stuff we did previously is kind of muddy in the water, but I hope you see what's going on here, what's happening on this thing. And maybe if I darken this a little bit more, it won't be quite so... Okay. So again, yeah, we divide this up into three rows and three columns. Three columns, three rows. Yeah, three columns. I should say three columns this way. That's our three columns. These are our three rows. I guess I should actually act like I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then along the top, we again, and we're not going to go all the way around. We're not going to act like we can see through it. That's the last thing we need is to be playing that game. But let's say, for instance, bring these lines straight across. And then...
again, if we had our the rest of the the x, where that hits, it, that's one third. Give us our full x here. X marks the spot. X marks the spot through here. Oops. Okay. Where that hits there and that hits there, that's one third. that came up that should go okay so we're thinking we're going to end up with I think we'll do this in black too um, like so this thing would come back here this would come back here like so as well. All right, so that would come back through there. This would come back. This is off a little bit. It's like I got my my line off. It was close, but it wasn't wasn't as close as it could be. Right about through there. There we go. Um, That's supposed to be right there. That's supposed to be right here. This is the front here. These are my lines going across this way. And again, if we want to, we could go ahead and draw in draw in the little That one. This one. That one. So hopefully we can see the uh, Hopefully we can see the the little tiles is what these look like tiles on the floor almost, but the little Rubik's Rubik's cube design. Hopefully we can see that going through there. So there we go. We now have a little Rubik's cube here. Because we used armature of a rectangle to find thirds, then we brought the thirds all the way around the the three planes we could see. If I wanted to, I could take them all the way around all six planes, but that is unnecessary for what we're doing for right now. So again, we can go ahead and we did armature of a rectangle. If you don't know what the armature is, I've got a video on, on the armature. 
You can go ahead and watch that as well. And again, the armature does all kinds of great stuff, especially in stuff like when we're dealing with perspective and, and all kinds of intermediate to advanced drawing techniques, you can start to employ the armature. And once you understand that, all of a sudden you, your whole new world opens up to you in terms of, ter in terms of what you can do and, and what is suddenly made possible. Um, so anyways, and I'm just trying to clarify this a little bit. Hopefully it's, it is really clear uh, that you can see all the, all nine little, little squares we've got here along the, the face. And uh, there's you know nine on each face, the top face, the the right face, and the front face. Um, okay, so this is building a a Rubik's cube out of this. Now this is pretty close to being a uh, pretty close to a cube and so this is you know this works really well for this because this is pretty close to being a cube that we can see again all these the, the, the different faces of this and can see the uh, divisions fairly well hopefully so there we go all right so for those that are actually taking my class, what I want you to do is I want you to, to do um, a one-point perspective box seen from above. This one we're seeing from below because we can see the top. Uh, we want one that's above, one below. We want a two-point perspective box, one below and one above. I want you to wrap uh, a ribbon around all four sides this way. I want you to wrap a ribbon around those four sides that away, and I want you to wrap these four sides that away, and I want you to do it on all four of those uh, those um, boxes that you've made, and then I'd like you to, to make one that's a th that's pretty close to being a cube, and I want you to, to uh, use the armature and to turn it into a Rubik's cube. All right. Um, again, if you I'll, for those that don't know about the armature, you go watch the, the video that talks about armature of a rectangle. And again, all those things that we can do, we can divide it into halves and thirds and quarters and eighths and sixths and all kinds of stuff. Uh, sixths, I guess I better make sure I'm pronouncing it so I don't sound like I'm swallowing my words. But you can, you can use that in perspective. Yeah, I could divide this into eighths, I could divide it into sixteenths. Usually you're not going to divide that much that away. But, you know, usually quarters, halves, and thirds are, are the most common. Uh, but anyways, it's a really great exercise. And again, we can turn just some cube into a Rubik's Cube, very, very simply. All right, well, this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care and be more creative.